It took 74 years, but thanks to the tireless effort of the Defense, Prisoner of War, and Missing in Action Accounting Agency, a Dodgeville man, Army Corporal Robert Paul Race, was finally identified on March 26, 2024, and flown home to be properly buried next to his mother and father at St. Joseph's Catholic Cemetery. Ask anyone who served in wartime about being a hero, and you will no doubt be told that the real heroes did not come home. The Dodgeville community recently had a chance to honor Bobby, as he was called, when he was escorted back home on Thursday, September 5th, 2024. And the importance is just, this is something that's once in a lifetime happening. Everything came together between all the sheriff's department, city of Dodgeville police, fire departments, veterans organizations. It, it came off without a hitch and just thank everybody that came out to pay the final respects. This is a somber story of a local hero who fought and lost his life in the Korean War. Born on November 26, 1928, Bobby enlisted in the Army on January 18, 1949. His unit was Charlie Company, 1st Battalion, 23rd Infantry Regiment, 2nd Infantry Division. He served in the Recoilless Rifle Squad. He carried a 45-pound rifle that was cumbersome and less mobile than others. In August of 1950 in Korea, Bobby recorded a message to his parents on a phonograph and mailed it home. bunch of guys here and they got a recording machine here so I thought just say a few words. It's too bad I didn't get time to write earlier. I wrote one but I never had no stamps. I couldn't send it one thing or another. Or our trip on the train was so darn bad. It could have been worse. Chow wasn't too good but out here I, we're really getting good food. Huh? A1. A1 stuff. And uh, how is everybody? I hope they're all okay, and Pa, and all the rest of them. And uh, I'll write you a letter before you uh, get this, so you'll know where you can uh, play it. You can play it on any phonograph. You probably have to go over to Townsend's and say hello to all of them, and uh, all the rest, rest of the people around there. And I feel pretty good. Uh, went down to the hospital here the other day about my ears, and they said my ears, there's nothing wrong with them. So. That's one worry off my mind. If anything ever turns up, why well, I'll be damn sure they don't have to take care of. There's a whole uh, guys that come down with me. They're all in a different company, but I get to see them every once in a while. I seen Harold Owen today, and I seen uh, Bert Ketcher from uh, Linden tonight, and uh, I'll probably see Paul McGraw and them guys in church tomorrow morning, and go out together and one thing another. And, we live in, uh, well, time is getting short now. I only got 15 seconds, Mom, so I guess I better close for now. And all my love, uh, your own son, Bobby. And uh, all right in the near future. So long. On August 31st, 1950, Corporal Race sent a letter to his parents, John and Alice, in Dodgeville, telling them that his company expected to engage in enemy fire that night. It was the last letter they received from their son. The same day he wrote the letter, his battalion was positioned on high ground above the Naktong River, reinforcing the front lines of the American and Republic of Korea forces defending Pusan Harbor, South Korea. According to the Defense Accounting Agency, the battalion was overrun by the North Korean People's Army on the evening of August 31st. The men of the Recoilless Rifle Squad made their way off the company's position and down a trail that led to Lake Yupo, where they had hoped to meet up with their other American units. However, in the early hours of September 1, 1950, as they moved along the base of a small hill, North Korean soldiers atop the hill fired at them and Corporal Race and two others were hit and fell into a ditch near the trail. The U.S. Army declared on September 1, 1950, that most of Company C was missing in action near Changyong, South Korea. In January 1951, the American Graves Registration Service Group consolidated the remains from 12 small military cemeteries at the newly established United Nations Military Cemetery in Tangok, South Korea. 
including one set of remains designated X-1578 Tank Hawk, which had been recovered from the area where Corporal Race was last seen. Recovery teams searched the lost area from December 1952 to March of 1953 for his remains, but could not identify Corporal Race. The Army officially declared Race dead on December 31, 1953. In August 1954, the Korean People's Army agreed to release the remains of casualties, of which 2,944 were Americans. In 1956, the remains, including X-1578 Tancock, were unable to be identified and were transported to the National Memorial Cemetery of the Pacific, also known as the Punch Bowl, in Honolulu, where they were buried as unknowns. In 2004, two survivors, Harold Uptegraft and Barry Roden, later reported that the North Korean troops that overran the squad captured prisoners and bayoneted the men in the ditch, including Corporal Race. Roden said he buried him and two others who were shot in a shallow grave, and he and the other survivors surrendered and were taken as prisoners on September 1, 1950. Fifty-four years later, in a November 7, 2004 article written by David Halberstam for Parade Magazine, Corporal Race's unit was on the cover. This photo was taken in August of 1950. For members of the Race family, that photo led to answers, sad and final, that laid the haunting questions to rest, seeing his unmistakable face looking back at them along with 10 other young soldiers, but still no positive identification. If everybody kind of remembers 20 years ago, Wisconsin State Journal Parade Magazine uh, cover, Bob Race was on that. Here 20 years later, he's finally home and hopefully we can recognize him again on Veterans Day, which would have been his birthday. Barry Roden told Halberstam in an interview for the magazine that they knew an attack might come, that they were vulnerable, and there was nothing they could do about it. Roden later learned that as many as 20,000 men of the North Korean infantry were crossing the Naktong River, and the only thing in their way was Company C. In Roden's case, the next day after being taken as prisoners, he said he and three other survivors were beaten and tortured and shot in the back the next day with a burp gun in the stomach. Roden played dead, but the other survivors died. With his intestines partially hanging out from the gunshot wound, he escaped and eight days later somehow survived and was eventually picked up by American troops on a bridge. In July 2018, the Department of Defense approved a plan to disinter 652 Korean War unknowns. On April 19, 2021, the remains of X-1578 Dankok were disinterred and sent to the Accounting Agency Laboratory. Based on the witness statements of Roden and Uptegraft, the remains near the irrigation ditch are consistent where X-1578 was found less than a half a mile away from their description. After collecting DNA samples from Bobby's sisters, Eleanor Jansen and Mary Alice Jackson in February of 2024, and comparing them to the remains of X-1578, the laboratory analysis and totality of the circumstantial evidence available established the remains of Corporal Robert P. Race. Mary Alice is Bobby's only living sibling. She was eight years younger and only 13 when Bobby went overseas. She is now 87 years old. I guess there was about eight years difference. Bobby was 21 when he uh, was missing and I was 13. Okay. And I was the youngest in the family. That's how I ended up with all this. And the majority of the nieces and nephews weren't even born yet. There were a couple, that, but they were babies. They were young, so. On April 1st, 2024, she received the call that her brother had finally been positively identified and would be coming home. It was the 1st of April when I was received a telephone call. And when I got the call, I didn't answer it because I didn't recognize the number and the uh, first three digits were way out and I thought, I don't, I'm not going to answer this. I, I had been in Portland and I stopped at Costco and I, was, is it, I had just walked into Costco and when the phone rang and I kind of looked, who's calling me, you know, I'm on my way home. And um, so it rang and it rang and it rang and I, kept, and I thought, well, I'm just going to say hello. And that's what I said, hello. Uh, Mary Alice Jackson, and I said, yeah, this is so much, and she right away told me who she was, and I said, did you find him? And she said, yes. 
and uh, then she told me a little bit that she would contact me about what the procedures were when he was coming home and all this. And I went out of the car. I went out to the car and got her telephone number, so I had it. And uh, then, oh, I don't even know what date she, it was. Maybe two months afterwards that she came to the house and she made an appointment to come to the house and she brought me this this book showing when he went into the service where he was at when this transpired and as they and how they identified him and of course my sister and I Elner and I had our DNA they had our DNA and back there when this originally happened there was no such thing as DNA his remains were flown from Hawaii to Milwaukee via Dallas where Mary Alice, family members, law enforcement, fire, rescue, and military personnel were there to pick Bobby up and escort him home to Dodgeville on Thursday, September 5th. Seventy-four years, that's, that's a little while. It's a little while. They've just really been good in trying to get this settled. And when we joined in in Montcorb, and uh, there was probably, I would say, at least three squad cars and maybe 20-some motorcycles, veterans, and then Mont Horeb had uh, fire trucks, veterans at both overpasses. We get to Barneville, that overpass was packed with veterans and fire trucks in Ridgeway. I think they had everybody out come into Dodgeville, and there's people from the hospital all the way up to the funeral home. I, just, I couldn't believe how many people there was. It was just so appreciative to live in a small town like this.
steps forward. March. Left. Peace. Forward. March. March time. March. Through. Hold. Center. Peace. Forward. The effort to get Bobby home involved many people and tremendous community support to honor this real hero on his procession back to Dodgeville. After lying in state at Gorgon Funeral Home, on Saturday, September 7th, a Catholic Mass was held at St. Joseph's Church in Dodgeville.
and in a most fitting gesture, an open plot owned by Fred Minderman was gifted to Mary Alice and the Race family so that Bobby could be buried next to his mother and father. Fred's father, John, also served in the Korean War, serving on the front line and treating wounded men. John Minderman received a Purple Heart Medal for injuries he received from shrapnel. John passed away unexpectedly in Dodgeville at age 37. Well, when I had called Mike, like he said, he was eating lunch the day that I called him, and I told him who I was, and I said, I have just found out that my brother that's missing in Korea has been identified. And, uh, and I said, I want to bring him. That was the thing when the gal called me at Costco that day, and when I said, have you found him? And she said, yes. And I said, well, I'm telling you right now, I said, I'm in Oregon but I want him buried in Wisconsin. I want him with my mom and dad. And so when I talked to Mike, I said, well, after this many years, I didn't think there'd be anything really close, you know, and I said, someplace in the cemetery, but it's close to mom and dad as you can get. And then he, like he said today, he had checked everything and he found out there was this plot that Miniman, so he called them. And when he told them what the situation was and who was, and they said, I'd love to have him there. My dad was in Korea, and he said, I have a veteran. I have a Korean veteran there. Following mass, a procession and full military burial followed. Governor Tony Evers ordered the flags of the United States to be flown at half-staff on this day in honor of U.S. Army Corporal Robert Paul Race. A closure, perhaps? Oh, yes. I'm thankful. I know my mother, she had a terrible time. Well, Dad did, too, when he was missing. And I think about that now. And I was young then, so it didn't affect me as much as it would a mother, what have you. And I thought, well, they're finally going to be together. And I, after this, well, they were together a long time ago. They had gotten together. So I'm, I'm pleased that it's been hard, but I'm, I'm happy with it.
Almighty and ever living God, remember the mercy with which you grace your servant Robert in life. Receive him, we pray, into the mansions of the saints, as we make ready our brother's resting place. Look also with favor those who mourn and comfort them in their loss through Christ our Lord. May you rest in peace. Amen. May you soar in the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God. Rest in peace. Amen. May the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever.
behalf of the President of the United States, the United States Army, a grateful nation. Please accept this flag as a symbol of our appreciation for your loved one's honorable and faithful service. Rest in peace, Corporal Robert Paul Race. Your journey home is complete. You are a hero.